We've been able to successfully install the server. Let's set it up for local access now. Let's configure a Libre server for access within our network. Now, of course, this applies to people who are on, say, company Wi-Fi or company Ethernet that are on the same local network as the machine that is running this server. If people go home or leave the local network, then they won't be able to have access to the PDM server. We will discuss in the next video the topics of remotely accessing the server when it's outside of your network. So this is for local access only. Let's install the PDM server. Again, we'll accept and install and we'll allow access. And then we'll run the server. Now we're greeted with the management console. This option here that's labeled as port is actually concerned with remote access, so we don't have to worry about it in this video. And be sure to talk to your IT professional if you need to use options regarding ports. This is where our server data location will be, and by default it's in the app data local directory. This of course can be changed by using the browse button, but this seems to be a great location to keep server related files. We're able to start, and when we do, a a Libre safe is created. The safe is where we keep all of our files. It is unlikely that you'll ever need more than one safe, but in the off chance that you do, you can create another safe by clicking on this button and giving it a name. And we'll say OK. A new safe has been successfully created and is active. So these safes would be each their own different repositories to keep different files. If you wish to manage these safes, we can always deactivate safes. And then we have an inactive safe. But if we'd like to remove it entirely, you'll notice that if we right click, delete safe is grayed out. We're unable to delete it because the server is running. We'll stop the server. And with the server stopped, we now have the options to delete safe, export its metadata, or back it up. So we'll delete the safe. And now with it removed, we can start our server once again. So that's how we can create and manage safes in our uh, server management console. And then lastly, I would suggest stopping the safe and always having use SSL on. And uh, when we start the safe, now we'll have much more secure communications uh, throughout our network and especially throughout external users. So with those settings, I can go ahead and minimize this. And if we wish to make further modifications, we can go into our system tray and see that the console is available with the Alibre icon in the system tray. Now, if we want others to be able to access this safe, we will want to set it up for access. We'll need to work on our users next. So we'll go into settings. And in Windows settings, I'll note the name of my desktop PC. This is a Libre underscore Joseph. That's the PC's name. And we'll use that for later. Next, we'll go to Accounts. And I'll go into Other Users. Here I have a list of users, but let's add another user. We'll click on Add Account. And uh, we'll say I don't have this person's sign in information. Next, we'll say add a user without a Microsoft account. And I'll name this person a Libre underscore user. We'll give them a password. And then we'll fill out the security questions. And click Next. Now with our new Libre user local account, we should be ready for people to log into the server. Now, if the router resets or anything like that, we may have different IP addresses when it comes back on. We don't want users to have to type in a new IP address every time that happens, so let's make sure that we have a static IP address. In settings, I'll go to Network and Internet, and we'll head down to Advanced Network Settings. Here we can see the various connections that we have. I'm connected on Ethernet. And so I'll choose the Ethernet that I'm on. And we'll go to Edit More Adapter Options. 
this window comes up here. And I'll look at my internet protocol version 4. Now we may also wish to know what our internal IP address is, and so we can know to leave that one the same. If we don't know this device's IP address, we can open up a Windows command prompt. So I'll hit my super key and search for CMD and select command prompt here. I'll type in IP config, and then a lot of information comes up. I'll find where I have my ethernet adapter because I'm on ethernet and I can see for this network that I'm at 192.168.1.212. I can also see my subnet mask and my default gateway. So we'll go to our properties of our internet protocol version 4 and we'll be sure to use the following IP address and I'll copy the values. 192.168.1.212 and then my subnet mask and my default gateway. I'll enter both of these values from what we just found in our Windows terminal. And then my preferred DNS server, I'll simply set that as 8888. That's a common one to use, it's Google DNS. We'll say OK. And now we can close. Now that we have a static internal IP address, and we have the user account set up. And we will create a user account for every user that wishes to access our Libre server. I can close my windows and I can go onto a machine on the same local network to access my Libre server. Again, we'll confirm that a Libre server is still running. And it still is. So this is a Libre safe that we'll be connecting to. So this is a machine on the same local network as our Alibre server device, and I'll start by opening the PDM browser. I'll want to connect to a new safe, and I'll do so by clicking on this button, connect to safe. I'll want to start a new connection, and here I can type in my local IP address. I'll say http colon slash slash 192.168.1.212 and then I'll add a colon and whatever value the port was set to earlier. We'll specify credentials and we'll use my desktop name. That's the one that I wanted to note and save for later. And then we'll say the new user. And we'll type in their password and we'll connect. And here we've been able to successfully connect to our safe locally. So we've been able to set up the Libre server on one machine and now we've been able to use a Libre to connect to it on another within the same local network. Again, if you leave the local network, this will no longer work. So be sure to follow the instructions for remote connections if you'd like to connect, say, from home or somewhere else. And that's how we do it for local access. In the next video, we'll cover some topics about remote access in case you need to access your Alibre server outside of your network. We'll see you then.